Hello boys and girls, here's my face, hello. Um, this video is going to be more of, um, you know, in during the COVID times I did these reading streams where we read paper and, and uh, discussed it. A viewer of the channel sent me this this paper and I kind of said I will review it. Now I, I didn't get um, you know enough uh, out of the paper that that I could turn it into an educational video. Um, so I will frame it as a sort of interaction kind of thing. If you don't know anything about uh, stock market modeling, in particular um, in the machine learning corner uh, prediction of um, market movements, then this might of be of general interest to you to see what the ideas are there. On the other hand, if you are really good at that stuff, then uh, please engage with me, with me in the comments. I will have a lot of questions. Basically, this ba this video is more of a question video than than an, an answer video in a sense. Um, but you know, to to um, fire up the parasocial elements that got lost since I uh, don't do any reading streams anymore. Um, <laughs> take this video, put up on the headphones, you will not really need any visuals for this video. And I will discuss what I found and what I don't understand and what I understand. And uh, it will be fun. Okay, so um, this is um, a, a paper sent to me by this viewer um, uh, because he was impressed by the um, claimed uh, prediction results um, where they try to, um, you know, take some Chinese stock market data and clean the data and process the data and then have a, an augmented time series and um, do a sort of predict next, next development. Uh, algorithm on it and they get like over 90 percent in various um, metrics and in particular the price movement metric and uh, th that's that's uh, for me and uh, and this guy um, f fairly high and indeed they seem to claim that here in this paper this works out like that I don't know what is the standard it sounds like naively if you have such high um, uh, win rate of um, predicting the market then uh, why doesn't everybody use that to uh, do stock market predictions but of course you know this metric is not the final gain of partic participation of um, using this algorithm in the stock market and um, conventional wisdom says if you sit in the stock market um, then you will make I don't know five to ten percent per year anyway and if you try to go in and out, then you might lose. And so if you, there's no um, perfect, um, close to perfect prediction, then it might actually be a bad idea to do trading and so on and so forth. So so uh, I'm surprised by this per positive result of this 90%. On the other hand, I could also see that um, you would actually have to look at uh, like the trading progress uh, on the the test data to see what it really means in terms of beating the market. Okay, so so much for that. That's how the interest in this uh, comes in. This paper is using long short term memory um, approaches and then doing a bunch of ablation studies um, to uh, predict the development based on um, a time window in the past, a sm small time window. And um, I will not explain all the machine learning stuff and statistical tools. So there, the main keyword for this paper are uh, this uh, recurrent neural network and the variations um, thereof and uh, feature engineering. Um, they use recursive feature um, elimination is a main part and, and see uh, like feature selection, what is which features should, should be selected. Um, for the stock market prediction and then a principal component analysis and uh, I have uh, been uh, playing around with trading bots uh, for crypto uh, in the past um, but that was uh, some basic scalping statistical approaches and not 
uh, machine learning stuff. So, but I have some machine learning experience from from the computer vision field and from the stuff that you saw on this uh, YouTube channel. I, uh, going into this, the, the whole thing, I didn't even know uh, what they really mean by feature. In the end, um, th you know, feature is the generic word that you um, that you use in uh, in machine learning. And let me just scroll quickly down. In the end, the uh, this is all about uh, indices that if you're doing trading and if you have done trading before, and I, li you know. I listen to a lot of like um, market analysts or commentators, so I'm very familiar with all these these typical indices. Um, and here, the feature really typically just means some of these that you see here, uh, like these indices and derived quantities that you see um, uh, here on the screen right now. Um, I was actually a little bit surprised uh, because I would have expected that there is more of like an end-to-end -end approach that would be common um, but in the end they choose the standard features that are sort of established in a normal uh, like you know handmade um, feature uh, handmade trading uh, kind of way but then uh, the paper is to a large extent about um, operating and um, on the these data so the, the elimination and principal component analysis of which I will do some commenta uh, commenting later, um, are done on uh, these uh, these time series, this derived time series, right? So, for example, um, some moving averages and whatnot, or um, an RSI um, relative strength index, and all these th these are all like words that denote some sort of time series that are derived from the uh, underlying stock da uh, state down. These are used and sort of uh, mixed together. And I had some learnings from reading that, and that's why I will also present to you this this text. Um, you find the text, of course, in the bottom uh, in linked um, here is the, the principal idea of what what to do. So they have some data. They accumulate at the beginning of the paper. They discuss about the accumulation of a lot of uh, different data. But in the end, I, I think this is mainly using uh, some Chinese stock market data and um, judging their algorithms on, on top of that. Something I find extremely curious here is that it does, f like just from reading the few papers and uh, that I have uh, like looked at in the last weeks, it seems like the, there is no like standard data set on which people compare, like academics compare uh, themselves against each other. That might be because um, those who want to make money with these things don't publish everything and the academics uh, that are like focused on time series for stock data are not um, large enough, not connected enough to have the standard data sets, which you would expect in all other like from a computer vision perspective, there is like there's like standards where people can compare their stuff against it, and uh, I'm, I'm sure in uh, language models it's the same. It doesn't seem to be here the case, uh, but um, these are all conjectures from my side. If there's somebody knowledgeable in in th that watches the video, please uh, comment it. Um, it is also the case that the this paper is written by um, people who did a lot of other machine learning stuff before that, so they are not finance people per se. And as far as I have seen, um, they are they didn't do finance afterwards. So they are, s I think, they are sort of outsiders writing this paper. And so, firstly, they might not be well connected or integrated, um, and that might be the reason why. But nonetheless, on the other hand, I appreciate that um, they are not too deep in the lingo of the finance trading market because I think that's what leads to the fact that they have a big survey uh, um, at the beginning of this paper, right, like tens of pages, um, which is nice if you want to, like, you know, in, in case their selection of references is good, then this gives a lot of uh, jumping off points. So that's why I also bring this paper to you. Okay, so as I said, they collect data, but in the end use a uh, few Chinese stock data. Um, they take the uh, the indices, which are called features, and then there is some standard augmentation uh, techniques to normalize it, to um, 
to scale it around. And this is also clear if later you do something like principal component analysis, then the data must be uniform in some sense, right? Uh, so uh, there's no surprise there. I will show you what they do. Um, then they uh, have the standard uh, uh, recursive feature elimination technique, uh, technique applied to that. Again, I will not explain, like this is like super standard um, uh, statistic stuff. Uh, and I will link um, maybe some other YouTube videos there. I, I, uh, before I started the video, I looked around on YouTube. It seems there are a few people who seem to make quite good videos on statistics, maybe even better than some of the physics stuff. So there's, you, 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 you type in like something that pops up in this, vi uh, in this paper a lot is like, uh, cross validation cross validation blah 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 and if you type in cross validation on youtube it's it seems there's always the same like five statistics or data science people who do videos on on these topics and they seem fairly uh, solid from an introductory perspective so um in a word if you have never heard of that recursive feature elimination is basically you you have a bunch of um of these features a bunch of this uh, this input data to the machine learning algorithm let's say and then uh, you um, you solve the problem maybe with a little bit fewer compute and then you do basically a sensitivity analysis which uh, which features are like weighted like literally in terms of the weights of the model for example uh, are uh, are the least relevant or interesting um, have the least impact and then uh, you find out which is uh, the worst out of the 20, let's say, and then you do the same thing with the 19 again. The learning, the model will look a little bit different, but you have the same sort of procedure. And then you uh, you recursively, that's where the R comes in, uh, eliminate the, these, these features which have previously been augmented. Um, and then uh, comes uh, a PCA, and um, this is also basically like, in a way you you take your you whatever features you have and and then you rotate them around a little bit so that you have the the this the the ones with the highest uh, variance um you know being the principal component and so on and so forth and then you can also use that to again throw away some data this is also like um i mean if you have ever worked with with gaussians um then you have an an, an intuition uh, about that right um it's um it's uh, interesting. I have not worked with time series, uh, which are, you know, in principle going back um, forever. Um, so often, like, you know, the, the not only do you have higher dimension, but you also have a lot of data. And I try to, to uh, like, if you have a bunch of data in one uh, moment, then I understand the principal component analysis. I'm not 100% sure how, do, how this is done with time series, how you decide how far you go back and all these kind of things. For that reason, on uh, Friday, I went to the library and got this this book. It might be a little bit too dark. Uh, time series. Um, that was the like from the title the most uh, like fitting uh, book uh, that I, I found, which is directly about the time series and the methods on there. Some uh, Springer book. Um, uh, however, um, sadly, uh, principal component analysis is not covered too much there and also only in the frequency domain and then I looked at the way this uh, statistics time series people cover um, the spectral uh, analysis and it, like there's so much like this is a rant on the side but there's so much overlapping uh, terminology of, of uh, concepts which are like close they, they sound the same but they are slightly different uh, I know this like spectral analysis and, and 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 this sort of thing from physics obviously but the, the there's like you know the switch between this and that correlation functions is a little bit annoying um i, I think um to to jump into you know this poor statistics not motivated by some i don't know electricity uh signal analysis it's it's a little bit it's interesting because everything sounds exactly familiar but also everything is tu is like tuned and they have like the statistics people they have for ev everything have they have their own sort of uh capital letter and uh, but they don't seem to be consistent not even over wikipedia um okay so i'm, I'm ranting here but interesting to, to delve into this into this field um okay and um 
one question and maybe you know if anybody reads this this paper or has um uh experience with that i'm not 100 percent sure if the the um recursive feature elimination procedure to what extent the whole um machine learning block that is used in the end is also actually used with this i'm really confused about um to what extent for these processes like what, what you actually like th I, i didn't get that from the paper which what the, what the metrics are um that are used here uh what i mean is whether or not they actually use the same metrics that they use in the end to for the feature elimination because there's a pca in between right so um I'm not sure if this to to if they do the feature elimination without the other augmentation of the data or not. So this is something I um, didn't understand. Oh, I'm just seeing you don't see my cursor, do you? Okay. Um, anyway, <laughs> so and then comes the 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 recursive neural network, and then they get the, this this nice results, right? Okay, so. These are some impressions I have there. Uh, as I said, I will scroll around a little bit. You have an introduction. What I find extremely annoying, you know, something <laughs> which is curious in this field. Um, if you Google around, it seems like th there's there's more Chinese and Indian papers than in other fields. Like every like every f paper is basically Chinese. I don't know if it, this was the case because I took references from this paper and there, even if they're not. Uh, writing the paper in uh, in China they're just referencing Chinese people all, uh, all the while and uh, you know I'm, I'm uh, th there's no problem with uh, with the this this sort of bias in particular uh, like for example you have a lot of Russians working in plasma chemistry so you have also a bias there but the what it but the result of this is is that all these the, the grammar of these papers like they are published in in some journals but there is like it's t in part unreadable like the way they use the the, the grammar right they, they don't know how to use while the word while uh you have to basically like guess what they mean and i guess you you understand it after you read enough enough of these papers but uh, this is super annoying for me okay sorry for these rants right but um you have to like i have the feeling ah there's there's good information there so there's there's like um these these um after the introduction there's this survey and this goes, goes on for like 10 pages and it, it, it name drops a bunch of concepts and that sounds helpful and there's links but uh the english is very broken and also i i didn't really find a red thread here right they are comparing origins and apples like in a way there's like th this paper proposes this uh long short term memory um approach in the end but they talk about a million other approaches and comparing them directly like it's not like you you, you talk about like uh, some other person's uh, uh, lstm and uh so it's 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 curious there seems to be no red thre f um, thread they are they are referring back to two recent um, i think chinese papers of the same sort recently but you would i i don't get the impression from this paper that there is like a strong like research from a research perspective a wrong research thread they are just trying things out and they're doing ablation studies but it's it's a little bit different than in other fields that i have uh, encountered but nonetheless maybe that's just like that or maybe as i said it's because they are like, like academics and and not you know i don't know jp morgan or whatever traders okay so much so much for that um so this is a 2020 paper as i said they, they um, refer um, to a recent paper that however i could not get freely online um, called um, <coughs> development of stock market trend prediction systems using multiple um, and I, i i cut myself off there um so th there's a paper which they uh they say basically has similar quality of results by Zubai, the, the paper i just named uh, have i i would love to look at that because I, i would have hoped that there the metrics in the end would be sharper explained but i could not access this paper also uh they say in the beginning um that this paper that we're reading right here is based on a phd thesis by shen i think this is a woman um i may link later the, the the google scholar pages for them 
which was called a new metric for individual stock trend prediction. Um, so much for that. Uh, while we're at references, let me say, so f from just looking at YouTube, if you want to know about principal component analysis, recursive feature elimination, and so on and so forth, I found this YouTube channel called Ritvik Math. I think I've seen this before, uh, who is like a data science guy, and I really like his style, like whiteboard style. He is a little bit more concise than my videos and seems to cover it well. I mean, he c only talks about um, data science and I talk about God and the world on my channel, <laughs> but <laughs> but still. Um, and then there was a guy called Sebastian Raschka, I think he's German, who has a nice video, I think, about recursive feature elimination. I mean, I, I, I skipped through it, but it, it, it looked solid. So that's my recommendations. Maybe if, you, if anybody asks me, I can make a recommended reading list there. Although, you know, it's also not really my field. Okay, um, I uh, also looked at that in the, in the end, so I talked about this, uh, this survey and then the first step, if you remember, is the um, feature expansion and this augmentation of the uh, features before they've been selected. And in particular, there's, you know, min-max scaling and these kind of things. And I didn't know what polarize means and even after searching around for 10 minutes, I couldn't really find what the definition, I, I think it has to do polarized, maybe they mean some polarization in this indices of uh, these, these, um, these features. Uh, and I imagine it, 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 it means um, that you have in certain spans of, of, of you know, days in trading time, for example, um, like a, a general, polarization of the market as a whole. I, I'm, to be honest, I'm, I'm not sure. I didn't really find what this actually means. Please enlighten me in the comments. Um, this I didn't, I wasn't able to find out, but I googled around and I saw uh, that these statistics people have generally fairly nice Wikipedia pages. So the, the one on feature scaling, for example, is these are all recommendations and I might put them in the comments below. Um, then The, yeah, I mean, one more ranty comment. There is no table of content. I hate that, right? I cannot refer to the uh, section six because there's no section numbers. I think there's like seven sections. In the end, they have like, uh, it, it, it concludes with three fairly large sections called result, discussion, and conclusion. And it's basically, I don't know semantically how these sections are different. So from a paper writing perspective, I know, you know, it's always easy to criticize these papers, but uh, they, they bugged me a little bit. You know, th they have basically three discussion sections at the end and call, call it by different names. I had the feeling. Um, okay. So, um, and now, um, Finally, uh, there is the, the like one of the interesting section is this section. I think it's the fourth section where the top, I think it's called methods, and they have some subjections like the algorithm elaboration. They describe the algorithms a little bit, but in the end, also you know, sorry for my complaining, but they, they have some their the pseudocode here and could just as well do it in Python because this is, I I mean, okay, let let me not let me not write on too much here. Um, they um, they uh, describe the algorithm and then the results and then there's a, a flood of um, of graphics and figures with confusion matrix. So basically, where they say, "Oh, how how great uh, things turned out," but it is like I explicitly searched and I'm, I'm not hundred percent sure which metrics in the end these uh, confusion matrices. Uh, really refer to. I assume it's uh, the win rate that that's what the feedback that I got from uh, interacting with uh, the guy who sent me this. But I mean, it's not explicit there, right? It could be the, it could be the prediction of either of these of these features of these indices. I assume it's the the win rate. It's most likely the binary win rate is one of these um, these these uh, metrics in the end. But they like this is. Uh, far too unlabeled these these, fi these figures like why this is so annoying uh, really okay um 
and of course I, as far as i understand there's no code or anything where you can just look at the code and see where this how this data is produ uh, produced and then you could tell what 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 is the case but that, that's not there okay so um Uh, okay, I will now read a little bit here in the, in the background. I will read a little bit of my comments that I had, that they have, had written down my questions. And for these guys uh, in the audience who know more, please answer this in the comments if you have an, an, uh, an approach to this, because it's a question for me. And for everybody else, uh, you you see sort of how I think um, of these these sort of things and uh, what pops up in my mind. Um, I would like to know um, how representative these techniques that they use, also the 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 elimination and, and the PCA of which they do a, an ablation study in this in this uh, work, right? So they, they they use the recursive neural network to do the prediction, but then in the paper, this is a lot about what happens if we don't do, for example, the PCA. And, and so I would like to know like how standard this really is and if there's other standard things that they did not mention in the, in the survey at the beginning. Um, the paper points out in the, in the uh, beginning also that uh, I'll read here the quote, we found most of the previous works in the technical domain were analyzing all the stocks, while in the financial domain, researchers prefer to analyze specific scenario investment of investment. So this is also interesting that there seems to be, if we take that at face value, this, uh, discre this discrepancy where you have researchers like them uh, jumping at this, uh, who in the end uh, use a different approach than the people who are actually using this um, so uh, this sort of thing to make money right so apparently the researchers uh are more like um, look at like all the data maybe compute averages while the traders have their their stocks and just try to understand them well the, uh, that speaks to me like a discrepancy that either the, the traders should um take findings and learn from the researchers or the researchers should um commit to common wisdom there or they sounds like things sh should come together in my thinking when I w while I'm reading this um yeah similarly th this uh, feature extension as they call it methods min max scaling polarizing and then um, fluctuation percentage uh, how representative is this? Like, I would like to make a list of things that you can do to your data. And <coughs> if I do this sort of analysis myself, um, see w w what else is there, like repeat basically the study, but a little bit with more like standardized data. I know, you know, if you're one person, you cannot really enforce the standardization, but um, in principle, I find this like a cool corner to research. But for research, you would also need more people to compare the results. And I'm not sure to what extent this happens here in this field, in this sort of especially antagonistic field, the making money field. Um, I was surprised that I uh, in this in this uh, in this paper, I, I found no uh, uh, confidence interval computations uh, as far as I'm, uh, I saw. Right? Uh, I'm, I will just scroll to some nice pictures because I will not need to the visuals here um, and also uh, correlations between stocks uh, is not discussed like right but if you're using um, if you're running this algorithm on different trading data even if it's just from a Chinese stock market then if the d trading data is highly correlated then running your algorithm, your prediction algorithm on, on all of them is probably less valuable, right? So um, more like they already care about uh, the input data there and they discuss about augmentation techniques, but I would re be really interested in, like, I think to make a good algorithm, you would want a collection of a lot of uh, different, um, different, data from different times from different markets and classify them in you know uh 
behavior wise right so a tech stock will behave or indices will behave differently than um, some resources uh, and also in time when there's like recessions and so on I, I think that a lot must be done there and I hope this is not all locked up behind trading firms uh, doors and there's something open but to be honest it seems to be the case um, as for the result part there is also uh, there's a discussion there. I'm not sure if I will find the section there. So one part of the paper that they highlight is the influence. Oh, sorry for for quickly scrolling around. Uh, the influence of the result, the prediction prediction accuracy on the the small numbers, uh, like for example, uh, the interval length like the amount of data points you take bef before the day where you make the prediction. Sorry, I don't find it now. Um, and that's a little bit also curious to me that there's so much variation in, in the end in both the cross-validation data, that's the, the yellow graph you just saw. Um, so this was a little bit sus to me, how there are certain, like, you know, if your algorithm is uh, so uh, sensitive towards uh, certain numbers, right? Instead of like looking at six days, you look at five days. If if the the quality, the predict quality, then jumps by a significant amount, right? So that uh, for for certain tuned parameters, like these should not be fine tuning parameters. I have the feeling the the algorithm should be conceptual enough to to work on. It sounds like you're fitting to the data. I yeah, you know, I don't know, but this sounds. So I'm skeptical there. Okay, then one major thing also that I just did not understand from this paper is there's. Uh, um, analysis of here you see like the, the you know dimensionality reduction in the feature elimination stuff there's then a lot of talk about oh now that we did this uh, the this and this training uh, interval uh, took less or more right but it looks from all the, the references to this in the paper and of also these images they are talking here about um, like 10 minute learning cycles right so there's like oh we tested this and we did this and now it's faster and slower but they, they are looking at uh, situations where they are only like learning for 10 minutes or so so right so, so i mean this cannot be your goal to to go from or oh, previously it took 15 minutes and now it took took 10 minutes if you want to uh, like learn the, the algorithm and then run it and make money with it then you should not care about the five minutes you should care about the like weeks training time right so i uh, this is like do they on purpose just cut out such a small um data set that you can stick on like to everything on your on your laptop and have all the simulations done in 20 minutes and then compare them against each other. But if you would make a deeper network, it would anyway perform better. So I I, I didn't get that. Like the these numbers, this, you know, we use 15 indices, fe uh, 15 features, and we use like, we look at uh, training times of like minutes. This cannot, I mean, th th then it sounds to me like you have more potential by just scaling the system up anyway, right? And this is not representative for what you would actually do if you do stock trading, right? So maybe I misunderstood this, but I don't know why we would care about uh, these, uh, like making, get, getting the sensitivity of the training time by significantly like halving the input when it's just talking about gains in the minutes. I. I I really didn't, like is this like just on purpose so unrepresentative um like are you so far away from what one would actually use but then this questions for me the 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 whole result so this is like some impression I got that I didn't really fully understand there um yeah um I just note that they say uh, the estimator of the recursive feature elimination algorithm is, um, uh, well, no, let me skip these technical details there. 
I, you know, I, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find some questions that I c that people can reasonably answer to me in the comments because I will really li like to understand this. I'm just go here there in the end of the video, just going through my notes, seeing what else I, um, I wanted to understand better. Um, I might be confused, but I think there's cases where the quality of the result, the uh, prediction numbers that come out are not actually monotonely improving by using more features and I was slightly confused about that or uh, it was a little bit surprising um, to me because I would have thought you get take more data despite the noise it would be the case that if you take more data that you get better results but I'm not 100% sure if I read that correctly or not but I think this is not the case here um, then again, I also, one thing that I have to say here, which um, rubbed me a little bit the wrong way, is, as I said before, the indices, sorry, um, the indices that they use are like, um, where's this list? You know, I showed you this before, like, there's some moving averages in there, right? Here. And this is a little bit sus to me, because, uh, if you to look at, take a moving average and learn from that, then basically you're already bunching together a bunch of numbers in, in, in intervals, right? And for example, the moving average, to pre predict the moving average cannot be too hard because the, a lot of the variability by design is already taken out of it, right? So if you're taking a moving average and looking at the last 10 um, values uh, and you get the, the, the mean out, and then you go one step further, uh, then you're taking the moving average of this new data point plus the last nine, right? And so uh, there's a heavy overlap. And so the prediction is, um, in principle, I suppose, uh, made easier. And then also, if, you, if you're if you using different uh, moving averages, then as two different indices, and, you know, I don't have in my... The, the RSI, for example, I know that there is a there's a, a weighted indexing happening there. Like you know, you cut out the negative traits and you just take the the positive over the overall. But there's also moving averages there in there. So the 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 moving average over ten days and the RSI over five days. There is some similar processes in which the data is munched together, right? So these are really not in independent features. It's very interesting to me then that that you would like uh, have them compete against each other or or, or possibly also have both of them in there, right? I would think when I went into this, I, I didn't expect that the features are just standard indices, and I would have thought that you have um, um, a machine learning routine which, like um, you know, like in a transformer, uh, creates the feature in the sense that you ha like you learn the representation um, and encode and use that as as, as, a, as a data point and learn the prediction from that compressed thing right so I, I, su I suppose part of this is already happening in in uh, the long term uh, long short term memory algorithm in a way but but then why is your input something which also has a moving average in there? So that's, I have the feeling that a bunch of things ha are happening multiple times, right? I have, you know, it's not really my field. So I, I don't know if this is maybe it's not, not, not bad at all. Maybe this is just helps to quench out the noise. And that's why it's fine to use this because then you have less noise in the data. But then again, I'm not even sure that the, the noise would, would kill the learning. Maybe it does. I don't know. So this is very interesting. And um, if anybody wants to talk about this uh, in in the Discord, uh, in the in the YouTube comments, I'm, I'm also like happy to jump into a Discord channel and, and have these things explained to me because I want to understand this. Okay. Um. Yeah, again, I already noted that it, the confusion matrix says, I think it does not really say uh, about what uh, what they are representing. I think it's win rate, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, they also mentioned in the introduction, I, I quote, as concluded by Pharma, 
in uh, reference 19, uh, 16. A financial time series prediction is known to be a notoriously difficult task due to the generally accepted semi-strong form of market efficiency and the high level of noise. Okay, noise uh, we have covered, but but market efficiency, I didn't really fully understand why market efficiency is a negative for prediction here. I mean, I understand that it might be difficult to make money if it already is is uh, optimizing in front of you, like roughly speaking, but why is the prediction negatively affected by efficiency? I'm not 100% sure why that it would be the case. Um, or maybe th that just means it because it's ha things are happening too promptly and um, yeah, no, I, I'm, to be honest, I'm, I'm not sure what it exactly means. So please uh, let me know. Um, then, uh, Then there's one more th term that I don't know. I have not Googled it. Uh, maybe it's easy, but there's uh, the brewing volume indicator. So from watching years of stock market uh, you know, analysis commentators, I know that obviously volume is of interest to traders. If there's more volume, then it's good to like, go into the market. You, you're liquid. And um, if volume is brewing, then you have the chance of... Um, things breaking out this is the like general wisdom um i'm i would like to know if there's the, the so-called brewing volume indicator how did how that thing is designed sorry i could have googled that before jumping into the video but i'm just noted down that i don't know what it is oh and finally um i, w I wonder uh if to get a better algorithm if you have more compute and then train to what extent is creating synthetic data which looks like the stock market possible because in principle i would think if you you know there's this this um you know there's the standard model where you say a uh, stock market behaves like a random walk and then you can look at and take a random walk uh and that has some a few parameters like the variance at which you know after so and so many <coughs> So, so and so many um, steps you get so and so far and you can then use a measured variance of some stock market I would say and and and, and get a, a, a random walk which has a similar characteristic and you don't have to do just a simple random walk you can also take another model of some stochastic process introduce some more parameters I think in principle it should be possible to if you can analyze a particular uh, stock or, 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 or index or so of interest to you if you do a lot of studies on just not you know not prediction but like the statistics of that particular re uh, process stochastic process if you do a characterization then you should be able to do that use that and make synthetic data and then learn on it and then get better results in predicting this type of stochastic process i would think uh, and i don't know if this is done but I would like to know if there's pro cons against this. Okay, I have been going on for a little bit too long. These were my impressions. Oh yeah, but when Googling around, I found two more um, names that might be interesting. I called them out also for the, the guy who sent me the paper. Maybe he has them already, but the, the, there's a similar paper, like similar, I think in, in a similar um, um, issue or magazine than, than this paper called survey of feature selection and extraction techniques for stock market prediction uh, 2023 and then why m another paper why min max opening and closing stock prices am are empirically most appropriate for predictions and why the linear combination provides the best estimate for beta that's a long title uh, these uh, papers looked uh, fairly interesting I didn't have the time to read them but yeah, so okay, this, um, sorry, this was not an uh, educational video, it was more like an impression video, and if you have no idea about um, stock market prediction, then this might give you an idea of what the math looks like. And if you, again, as I said before, if you are an expert in this, uh, contact me in the comments, and uh, I would like to, to get your impression. I ask around before, uh, like I'm, I'm in a few um, machine learning hubs, where there's uh, experts on machine learning, uh, not necessarily stock uh, stuff, and their impression uh, seems to be that that it does not really work. That, that there is no um, um, great machine learning tool. Uh, 
and if there was then everybody would use it and maybe there already are and that's why things don't work i don't know i have not also looked at any other youtubers i know from years ago that like when i, I did my python uh, bot to tr for trading that there were definitely a lot of people doing algorithmic trading um but i don't know how happy go lucky and simple uh, their approaches are or is if there's more fancy math behind it which i would also be interesting to understand better what works and, and not okay so with that said i wish you a good evening Mwah.